What is going on ladies and gentlemen, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a helmet review. Um, not an unboxing because I wanted to give an honest review. I wanted to use the helmet and get some real riding in it before I actually talk about the helmet. And so that's what we're going to do. I've been using this helmet to commute to work um, probably about three weeks, in four weeks. And I mean we're talking about a few hundred miles, maybe about a thousand miles on the helmet already. So uh, definitely uh, got a good insight on how it works and what I like and what I don't like already. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. So with that said, let's go. And with that said, let's get into it. So this is my new helmet. It's a Bell Race Star Flex DLX. Uh, I think the price is about $779, almost $800 um, online if you buy it. Probably the same around at, if you go to a, a retail store. So it's absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love the helmet. And um, well, sort of. <laughs> I should say I love the look of the helmet. There's definitely some pros. There's definitely some cons. So uh, I guess we'll start off with the pros, right? Um, it's super lightweight. It's a full carbon helmet, which is pretty freaking awesome. It's called 3K Carbon, I think it's called. So they actually make five different shells. I believe the small and the extra small use the same shell, and all the other helmet sizes have their own shells. So uh, it helps reduce weight and things like that and size, right? So if you have a medium size head, you don't have to share with someone like me with a big ass head on the same shell. So that's pretty freaking cool. One of the Main reasons what I really liked about this helmet is it comes with a photochromatic um, visor so it gets dark uh, when the sun's out and it goes clear when it's nighttime. So for me, someone that commutes in the mornings, that's awesome. I can actually see in the mornings when it's pitch black out and on the way home it gets tinted and dark. Uh, I won't say it gets as dark as my other helmet but we'll take a look at that in a, in a minute. Um, I do have some footage of that so we'll take a look at that. But um, another cool feature here is that it actually has three EPS liners so normal helmets, most helmets only have the one EPS liner. Um, well what they found is that EPS liners react different based on the type of crash you're in. So if you're in a, a, a low impact, slow crash, high impact, fast paced crash and all those types of things, the liners react differently. So they have three different liners, one for uh, I think a slow impact, a medium impact, and a high impact uh, as far as speed wise. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, another cool feature is magnets. Oh my god, why don't more helmet companies use magnets? Magnets straps in, the magnet goes right into your strap. So as you can see, if I can show you here, I'll try to show you, kind of far away, but I can, I can probably zoom in. Look at this, watch, boom, it snaps into place. And the way it buckles in, it fits pretty snug, snug. So at first I was a little concerned or maybe like it would come undone, but it, I mean, it's, you can talk on that thing. It takes a little bit of force. And especially when you're going through the D-rings, you're probably good to go. Um, and the second thing is the actual uh, cheek pads. These are magnet as well. I don't know if you can see that, but look at that. They just snap back into place. Super easy. There's not no messing with snaps or little buttons or anything like that. That's freaking awesome. The entire liner comes out, so if you want to wash it, you can wash it. Um, they also have different sizes, so that's something I may have to look into. Is a smaller cheek pad. They do have some. I don't think they're for sale yet, but they do have some um, to help with that. So it is. I think they said it is a medium oval helmet. So if you have like an oval helmet, this, this or oval head, this may work for you pretty well. Another thing that's really good about this helmet is also a negative, but we'll talk about that later. Is uh, the airflow. On many of the helmets that I've ever had, I, I know they talk about airflow and the channels on the top of the EPS liner designed to like push air to the back of your head. I've never really felt that to be honest. I have the Show Quest, I've had multiple Icon helmets, I've never really felt that. I can tell you with this helmet, with the vents open, I can feel almost like when you roll the window down and the air in your car and it hits your hair, you can almost feel that. So when you have all your vents open, you can literally feel the airflow on the top of your head, which is freaking awesome on a hot day. That is freaking perfect. Um, I really thought that was designed very well on this helmet, so I really, really do enjoy that. Another thing, of course, it is DOT and Snell approved. So if you like Snell approved helmets, here you go. Now one of the cool things is the peripheral vision on here is really, really, really good. Uh, obviously it's a race helmet, so you're gonna get a little bit more of that as well. So 
Um, I don't have any problem seeing left or right uh, through my peripherals. I think that's really cool with this helmet as well. Works out really well, especially on freeways when you're trying to do head checks and stuff like that. So I enjoy it. Now, I've been riding it with a GSX S750, so I am sitting up a bit upright. And to be honest, I don't notice any huge difference. Like it works really well sitting upright or when you tuck down low and I take the Daytona out, it fits well with that bike as well. So um, in, in terms of it just being a race helmet, I think it works really well for uh, commuting and things like that. It just, you don't get a lot of head bobble. It seems, one, that's one of the things I noticed with this helmet versus my other one is on high speed freeway. Uh, with my other helmet, I tend to get a bit of a head bobble. With this one, the way, maybe because the way it's designed, I feel like your head, the faster you go, it's kind of held in place and with the wind flowing around you and your head's not bobbling around as much. So I really, really appreciate that, especially when you got those long commutes like I do. It makes a huge difference. So before we get into the negatives, let's go ahead and talk about the visor and show how that works. I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the dark visor, how, it gets, how dark it gets compared to my other helmet. So I'll put that up on the screen right here. Um, as you can see, you can see the difference. The, the, the Bell helmet does not get as dark as a normal super dark tinted shield although it does a job it's not too bad i haven't had any issues with it so you can see uh, the difference there okay one thing while editing this video that i realized and i just wanted to bring up real quick is that and i forgot about this is that the visor itself um from the inside looking out is pretty clear you can't tell the dark tint versus light tint it's, it's really good job at that and i forgot to mention that that was in part of the documentation where they said that so i've never really seen the visor from the outside as it gets dark and now looking at them side by side it does actually look like they get pretty much the same as far as the tint so um that's why i said in the videos you saw you heard me just say is like it actually does really well and it just maybe because i didn't realize that it actually gets just as dark anyways Back to the video, I just wanted to point that out. That was my mistake, I had never seen it from that point of view. So, uh, let's go. Now, one of the things I haven't even looked at, I went in and recorded this, uh, I haven't seen how long it takes for the visor to actually turn dark. So that's what I'm gonna put up right now so we can take a look at this and see how long it takes for this visor to go from completely clear to completely dark. Um, I'll put a timer up maybe if I can figure out how to do that. If I can't, uh, you can obviously, it doesn't really take too long. Um, by the time I warm up my bike and I'm on my way out of work, it's already dark and it's ready to go. So I haven't had any problems with that. Now, let's talk about some of the cons. Well, easy. <laughs> One of the problems, and you'll read up on this, they tell you that it fits really snug. And it fits extremely snug. Now, uh, the problem I have is I don't necessarily have the most oval head. And so I've always had problems finding helmets, especially like Icon helmets. I can't wear those for very long because they give me a headache. The Showy Quest was the first helmet I've ever had where I can ride for, I don't know, days and not have any problems. Well, this helmet, man, I really, really, really want to love this helmet, but the biggest problem I have is my ears. It really puts a lot of pressure on my ears where it, it really does hurt. Um, on my other helmet, I was using earplugs, uh, the Pugue earplugs that go in ear so that I can listen to my audiobooks. Well, I tried doing that with this one. It is so tight that I had to stop and pull my earplugs out because it was putting so much pressure on my ears that just doing a head check, it made my ears throb. So that's a definite downfall with this. Now, even without the earplugs in, I definitely feel pressure on my ear. Just not as bad, but I could definitely tell that it's there and it does cause a little discomfort. Um, I'm hoping that eventually it breaks in enough to where that doesn't happen. And that goes part to the plug. Going back, talking about the cheek pads and having different sizes. Um, part of that is I'm hoping that maybe if I get smaller cheek pads, which is only like five millimeter difference is what they're talking about on the website, that maybe that'll help. And so, I don't know. That's a negative for me. May not be for you. If you have more of an oval head, this will probably be perfect for you. It does have um, speaker holes for the Cena as well. I forgot to mention that. It does have those as well, so easy to plug in and play. Now, one of the other downfalls I found with the Cena though, is I could not get the base of the Cena to go up into the helmet like I've done with all my other helmets. So I actually had to use the 3M tape um, to put on the Cena. And if you can see, it sticks out. It doesn't actually snap into place completely on the top. It, it bolts in fine. So far, I haven't had any issues, but it, you can see it kind of looks a bit odd. It doesn't fit 100% with this Cena. Uh, this is a 20S Evo, so uh, you know I had to use a 3M tape on it. That kind of sucks. 
Um, now with the positive with the photochromatic, the one one thing that I wish they had and they doesn't ha doesn't have on this is it doesn't have the pinholes for you to put in the inner insert for the visor to keep it from fogging up. However, I do I have been working with a company who's sending me a universal insert that I can insert on this helmet uh, to make it feel like it has a pin lock so it, it basically doesn't fog up. So I have that video out soon. I'm going to be using it on this, but that is definitely one of the downfalls I thought is you don't have that. So like really cold mornings, rainy days, things like that. It's going to fog up on you, unfortunately. And I don't know about you, but I've never had good success with like the anti-fog wipes. They just, they don't last long enough. But the pin lock visors, amazing. So I'm hoping with that product that I have, which I'll do a review on later, um, will fit into this visor and we'll fix that. And that'd be an easy fix. So, okay. One of the negative thing that, and, and it was a positive thing in the heat, I was talking about the airflow. The airflow on this helmet is amazing. It works really well. Except in the mornings when it's 40 degrees out, you can close all the vents you want and air still gets in here and your head is freezing cold. Um, a positive is a negative, I guess, on here because that does really, really suck. And so maybe depending on the time of year, you may not be using this helmet as much because it does get pretty cold inside the helmet, even with all the vents closed. And if you forget to close some of the vents on the way out in the morning, oh man, be ready for a cold ride. Uh, I even use the, the baklava in the, in the morning to go to work and it, it still feels pretty cold in there. Um, it, as far as being loud, it is pretty loud. Again, that's what you can expect with a lot of airflow. It's not the loudest helmet I've ever had, um, but it, it is definitely a little bit loud. But it has to go with all the airflow that this helmet has. I said, like I said, the airflow is so crazy on here. It feels like you roll your window down in your car and the air just hits your air. And it feels great, except when it's cold out. That's, that's not so fun. Um, so there's really not too many negatives. Like I said, a uh, couple things, really the, the size, you know, it really does hurt your ears if you don't have a really oval head. Um, that's something to be careful about. Uh, the uh, not having the pin locks on your visor kind of sucks. And um, yeah, anyways, that's about all the negatives. All right, well, with that said, that's my review of the helmet. Um, like I said, I'm hoping that the you know, wears in a little bit and it gets a bit more comfortable. Uh, but so far it still hurts, you know, the size of my ears on both sides. And that really does kind of suck, but it is what it is. Uh, for an expensive helmet, as, as expensive as it is, oof, um, would I buy it again? I honestly don't think I'd buy it again. Uh, mainly because of the, the shape of my head. Uh, the shape of my head isn't very oval, and so I have problems with that. And But again, for me, and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there that, that have a similar uh, shaped head, finding helmets is really hard for me just because most manufacturers make oval helmets. Uh, my head's not very oval at all. So I do really, really want to love the helmet. I love the design. I love some of the features on it. The magnets is amazing. I wish more companies made helmets with magnets. It's so nice, quick, little, easy to take off when you want to get it off. Uh, when you have gloves on and you're trying to like snap it on, it just pops into place, which is awesome. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys stay safe out there. And uh, if you enjoyed the video and you like this, uh, make sure to stay tuned because I am gonna have a little review of the insert for the helmet. And that'll work for any helmet that doesn't have a pin lock. And other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, night, weekend, whatever time it is you guys are watching this. And until next time, peace, ride safe.